This is kind of the first of many videos of my home automation setup. And so this is kind of the start. Um, well, not really the start. This is kind of the third version. My first version was inside of Docker. So I had Home Assistant with Docker and I had this little dongle right there. And it was working great. That's in my uh, network attached storage server, which is on the rack. The reason I moved off of that I moved over to an Intel NUC. And when I had moved over to an Intel NUC, it's because that's kind of what they were telling me to use, uh, Home Assistant recommended is using the Intel NUC. And their image was actually structured for an Intel NUC. Um, so you kind of lost a lot of support if you went with your own kind of computer setup. With the latest release of Home Assistant, they actually changed their image name from Intel NUC over to generic x8664 basically a standard computer and so i had to switch off of the intel NUC for a second reason as well um which was my intel NUC didn't have a built-in ethernet i was not aware i was not paying attention when i had purchased it i was just kind of like that's a mini computer you know should have ethernet most things have ethernet nowadays even in a raspberry pi has ethernet um did not have Ethernet. I was using a Thunderbolt 2 dongle, except it doesn't want to come up on boot. So every other boot or so, every time I would update, it would just kind of never come back. Um, and I would just have to keep rebooting it until the Ethernet came back. Um, so that brought me to version 3 here. And version 3 is a work in progress. Um, I wanted to get it as kind of low power as the Intel NUC. I didn't want to go with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, just because I wanted to reduce as much latency as I could. And the Raspberry Pi, you know, without buying a very expensive Raspberry Pi, um, like an 8 gig, you know, with with all, all of the crazy stuff in it, having to buy a custom kind of, either most likely a custom board just to have like gigabit ethernet and all this crazy stuff. Um, not having to use micro SD card. Uh, so I kind of just settled on this. Um, the reason I switched over to this is because uh, one day someone just gave me a motherboard and a CPU. Um, that kind of made the jump for me. So I already had a stick of rambling around. Got the motherboard, got the CPU. They gave me, or sorry, I purchased the NVMe drive, 23 bucks, 16 gig NVMe drive, Intel Optane, I believe. Yeah, 16 gig until Octane. Um, I had to buy my own graphics card. I had the whole system using 27 watts idle on a 12 volt only power supply. I'll explain in a second. Um, with this, this is an NVIDIA. Unfortunately, the NVIDIA crashes the, the operating system a lot. So I switched over to an AMD. Unfortunately, now I'm using about 56 watts. Kind of sucks. Basically, going from this to that, that's about $3 a month more in electric. Um, which I'll explain in another video, the goods and bads of both of them. And up here, the 12 volt power supply. So right now, I had been using this, trying to troubleshoot the card. Um, so it, those numbers might be a little bit off. They might be closer to 50 watts uh, once you gain some efficiency that is the least efficient power supply you could probably buy um and it's also not matched for the amount of power this system uses that is a 550 watt power supply it is not 80 plus rated at all so it's probably close to like 75 percent efficiency it's trash um this right here is a very efficient um this is kind of i believe it was like 86 percent efficiency um going from 12 volt over to kind of like all the bus rails that it needs all the power 3.3 5 volts etc um, this is 300 watts um, has a CPU connector on the other end it has an additional GPU slash CPU connector on this end um, it works fairly great for this setup because I only use like you can see over there 56 watts um, so once I get this in an enclosure I'm going to and like a two unit enclosure rack mount. I'm going to put that power supply with it and not this one. 
and um, hopefully get the power usage a little bit lower um, with my 12 volt setup. This won't have any additional fans. Um, it'll just be the CPU fan. I kind of wanted to keep it all self-contained to the board. Um, eventually someday if I get like a integrated graphics CPU, I might put that in there instead. Um, but at the moment, so if you're gonna buy something, buy something with integrated graphics. So this is a Ryzen 1200. If I could find a cheap, you know, sub hundred dollar graphics Ryzen processor, I would shove it in there and get rid of this. That would probably save me a lot of power. Um, but kind of, it's what I got. <laughs> um, that was 23 bucks on eBay. And this one was about 50, 60 bucks on Newegg. Um, so I kind of lost money here. But a new CPU is going to be way more. It's going to be in like the two, 300 range. Um, so Home Assistant on the side here, this is a Nortec USB dongle, Zigbee and Z-Wave. Um, everything Wi-Fi is connected through the router so it can handle Wi-Fi devices. Um, I have a couple Tasmoda devices. Um, it hooks up by Ethernet. And that is pretty much it. So it's Ethernet and a power cable. 